Okay, if you anything like me, um, to come up with uh, in Affinity Designer, my favorite tool to use. If you have to come up with a pie chart like this, um, I had some crazy ways of getting to it. And then I sat down and I thought, no, there has to be an easier way. And that's what I want to share with you. But let me show you the, the route that I went first. And yes, I say route because I'm in South Africa. I know if you're in the States or there, they say route. But I think we're closer to the British uh, uh, Queen's English. And that's why I say route. So the route I used to go is I used to come in with this donut. Um, I call it a parametric donut. Let me make it, let's make it red and a clear outside. Okay, so I would make the whole object like this. Then say I wanted that area. Um, I know this might look a bit daft now when I think about it, but this was the route I went. Um, I would take this object and convert it to um, convert it to curves. Uh, this was one of the ways I used to go convert to curves so that I could get the actual rotation point. Then I'd click this and move the rotation point to the edge and then do a, uh, a control J which is a duplicate of this so that when I rotated I had the the extra one and maybe could turn that to blue um, and then pretty much control J would give me the next one and control J and I would just change colors and of course um, would have to modify the center and fiddle with that okay so was, that was the one way um, the other way was if I left it to be, um, I didn't sort of right click and convert to curves. I left it to be still this parametric object. I literally would go control J and then just take the handles and move it out. And then do a control J again twice. So we'd have this thing pivoting around the center. So then I, I could kind of get still a, a good result and manipulate it there. So that was the route that I used to go. And then I thought it through and this might help you. I kind of went still to the donut tool. So if I was going to do it, um, what I decided to do now, I created that and then just went to the node tool. So let me get to the node tool here. Are we on the node tool? Yep. So grab that, take it to the middle. And pretty much what I did now was I did a control J. I just changed the color, control J, change another color, control J, another color. So if you look here in my layers palette, I have my layers palette on the left. I changed the colors of, of all the uh, circles that I just replicated here. So if I switch that one off, you'll see the green, the red, and the blue right at the bottom. Um, okay, I think I'll make this top one maybe a, a more separation of a color, maybe sort of nice that's purple I think yeah so this is what I do now and then start simply by um, you could go to the node tool or you could just stay yeah I think yeah you have to be in the node tool and then grab the handle and I pretty much just take it down to be whatever shape because you can see the shape here then I'll go to the next level and take it down there just so I can see what I'm working with. Oops. Control Z. And then the final one is the big shape here. Um, I can take it. So there I have now the perfect circles that I'm working with. So if I wanted to decide that this particular blue area is going to start from the bottom here, then I'll grab that handle. As you can see, it comes around. So I'll start there and then I'll do the Maybe this is the next one, so I'll take it to that area and grab the other side. And that's how I'd get around it. And this is a, a more intelligent and more intuitive way of, of working with it. You know, so if I select that and say those were the percentages, then I've pretty much got it there. And then in this case, yeah, I still have them parametric. If I decide that I was going to, you know, change something up like this, then I still have that flexibility. So that gave me the kind of 
control there. And the other thing is if I wanted to create a, a nice white border, it's as easy as putting it there. And remember, you can then adjust this accordingly so that you have your lines straight there or you could just place this object oops sorry place this to the top so I'll just pop this to the top so that these lines are the ones that count for that and then we can go white lines there etc so you can fiddle around with that as far as the lines go and then your textures are all per normal I'm just putting in this uh, full tool um, because the image I started off had a, a bit of a gradient so you can then add to your textures but still if you go to the node tool uh, if we go onto the node tool and we select that area we still have control over the area so although we have the gradient and everything it is still parametric and we can manipulate it so yeah, this is the way that um, I'm rather doing the uh, pie chart setup uh, because this is I think it's it's more intelligent to do it this way and, and it works just nicer um, you've got lots more control of it so again as I said uh, make the circle I make it out of this pie this parametric pie area I control J I make four copies of it and then use the node tool to to start sort of turning the curve around okay so hopefully that has given you sort of some insight to doing the job quite quickly um, yeah, I don't don't know why I haven't thought of this much quicker or much earlier. It would have helped me with. I finished one or two projects where I did did it the other way that I showed you. So hopefully this helps you. Have a fantastic day and God bless.